away and waiting at the door, though. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. The highest jumping hit of the week. Let's bring in the man who does it. Please bring in Steve Perry. Yeah. Steve, it is a pleasure to meet you, buddy. It's nice to meet you, too. I, I feel like, of course, uh, having played so much of your music all through the years, this is really stupid of me to say this is the first time I've met Steve Perry. Well, it's the first time I've met you, too. I mean, we know of each other, but we never get to meet each other. In the I know, and really. I, 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 the, I keep on seeing you blowing everybody away in USA for Africa for some reason. Because, <laughs> you know, this is, this is a group of tired people who went to oh! the American Music Awards and these people are all whipped, and Steve Perry gets up there and just blows everybody right. away. Uh, I owe you money, Rick. No, I'm <laughs> serious. And uh, let's talk about your voice first, too. Did, your voice, uh, w was there a little boy version of your voice, or did it just never change? Because you can hit these high notes, and they're clear, you know, and they're a, beautiful. That's a great question. You know, when I was about three, four years old, I remember going to, a, to an auditorium in my hometown, in a summer day where my dad was playing that day he was performing my mom was a dancer in the in the can can group my dad was out front singing and i was about maybe three four years old and i remember back in the, those days everybody wore like you know dress shorts and and shoes and stuff everywhere sure. and i'm looking down and my little sausage legs are like hanging barely touching the ground <laughs> and i'm looking at my dad and i'm looking down and when he was singing i knew that i had that in there i knew that was in me too what he had i had in here too mm. and i know that that so many times i when i I'm singing I'm, I'm just getting back to that moment of recognizing that I think does he have a voice similar to yours his is a different different generation his mm. is the Sinatra thing oh you know, <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. pennies from heaven for you and me hey, thank you. <laughs> there's a song I want to because it's really catching on you better wait give us the background of this you the better. song was written about a girl I saw at the corner of Highland and Vine Street in Hollywood and she she was too young to be that run down on the street it was a sad situation and she looked like she was about 17 and did she, did she look nice well she she looked like she was working the street to be honest and, and mm. too young to be run down you know mm. and and I thought well maybe she was a beauty queen from another town and she went to the city to get her dreams you know it didn't turn out then I thought maybe her pride won't let her my mind does these things maybe her pride won't let her go back you know to town because it didn't turn out the way she wanted it to so she's stuck in that trap where she could possibly be in harm's way worse than she even knows so when the song started to be written uh, the You Better Wait started, and uh, Stop Yourself Before You Fall, Stop Before You Lose It All, because somewhere there's love. We had kind of that going mm -hmm. between Lincoln and myself and, and Paul. And then when it came time to get back to writing the first lyric, she was 17, a beauty queen. I met her in a magazine, came to my mind because of that experience. And it sort of grew. All grows together. Yeah. Ooh, I love to hear the story behind it, because then when you crank it up, right. you really have a relationship. Steve Perry, You Better Wait. <gasps> Steve Perry, you better wait, and uh, he's here live. That, the video for that thing is like 10 to 12 minutes long, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit of a, of a piece for information, you know. It's got uh, some performance stuff in it. It's got some interviews. It's got some memories of the past, and it's got a little bit of everything. You love what you do, don't you, Steve? I'm, I'm really loving it again. There was a time, i got to admit to you, that I had to stop. After being in Journey for 10 years, I just mm. had to jump off because I wasn't loving it as much as I used to. I knew something was wrong, you know, at the very sure. end especially. And so I stopped for about six years there, seven years, before I started making music again. What would you do? All kinds of things that you do, you know? <laughs> I mean, just life stuff. You know, First yeah. of all, I slept in my bed and, and with my pillowcase, you know? And, that, that's, you know that's which very, was a big one. Because <laughs> you're traveling all the time with Journey. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing to an well, artist who's on the know, road. I'm not complaining about those times i want to make that perfectly clear but for 10 months of touring you know hard and then recording a record and then going out for more 10 12 months we didn't stop for about 10 years wow. it, was, it was it was a long run oh. but it was great times and now you've kind of had a chance to look inside yourself what, what have you found when you looked in there what kind of guy is that well i knew who steve perry was when i left it at the 10 year point i was yeah. very clear about that because every night people would tell me who that was <laughs> but i forgot who steve was in the in the equation i think and and it took time to go back and, and find that. And uh, part of that is personal, mm. and part of it is public. I hear you. Well, if you want to get personal with Steve Perry, right now, here's the number, 1-800-RICK-DEES. You can call me, 1-800-R-I-C-K-D-E-E-S. You might want to congratulate Steve for taking that time off and making the biggest jump of the week on the countdown. Up 10, number 20 on the countdown. Yes.